to the video. Today we have the Outra Solstice. Outra sent me out a pair of these. And Outra also did send me out a pair of these four years ago. Almost four years ago. It's a little bit spooky. Almost four years ago to the day I received my first pair of Outra Paradigms. This is the first and only pair I've ever had. It's still going strong. Outra gave me a pair of Solstice, which is more of a everyday sort of shoe, which I use this for everyday, but the Solstice, in my opinion, I worked in footwear for a long, long time. I've sold thousands of pairs of running shoes. Um, Outra is the only brand I wear. Yes, they give me free shoes, but I just fucking love their product. And I don't wear their shoes because they give them to me free. I've also bought Outras before, but I just, I rate them. So anyway, they sent me out there, said, Harley, can you do a review video? Share us what your thoughts. I, I love what I do love about them and what I don't like about them. I love the upper, it feels very comfortable. Um, Feels like a real all day shoe, marathon shoe, ultra marathon shoe upper. I personally wouldn't run a marathon in these. It's not enough cushioning for me. I'm a 247, 248 marathoner. I prefer something a bit more cushioning, cushion for the pushing. So for me, these would be more my park run 5k shoe. So you see me a park run, I'm gonna be wearing these. I'm gonna be wearing these. Um, that, these are good for park run, but they're a little bit heavier and a bit more cushioning. I don't need that much cushioning for, for a 5k personally. If you do, then it's fine. But for the marathon, the cushioning really helps because it delays the fatigue metabolites and all that smash on the, on the pavement. These, though, weight-wise, I don't have any scales on me. They're definitely a little bit lighter. All right? So they give it more of a race feel uh, for if you're pushing those faster 5K times. The upper I do like. It does feel very seamless durability-wise. Well, time will tell. But the, this durability up one's been really good. It's like a little micro hole on the side. But this is you know, four years of heavy usage, still going strong. Uh, so the sole feels, it's more of a firm ride. It's definitely not the max cushion plush of the Paradigm, which I'd rate highly. So this is a great one to have in my rotation. This is my 5K shoe. This is my 5K shoe, this is my speed work shoe, not that I do speed work. Um, but one day if I do do speed work, I'll be using this. <laughs> I've been saying that for like 15, 20 years, I'll do speed work one day. But this is a 5k shoe for sure, so I'll be looking forward to setting some park run PRs. I did have the outro one before this, which I gave away in Thailand. It was pretty well worn, not much cushioning left, so I gave it away in Thailand. Uh, this is going to replace that. It does feel, the upper feels a bit nicer on the foot, and I think outro is really paying attention to its uh, requests. And it just does. It looks a little bit more stylish as well. It looks like a Nike Free, which is a very popular shoe, the Nike Free. But... Those Nike Freeze, they got hardly any cushioning. There's not heel drop. They're narrow as so that not for, for me. The Nike Free is purely a fashion shoe. It's purely a fashion shoe, and let's be honest, Nike shoes are fashion shoes. They're not high performance shoes. Even the ones on the the world record marathoners, they could make them a wider toe box. You know, they're still stuck in that narrow aesthetic Air Max sort of look. But Ultra, boom, wide toe box, so you can fucking splay. That's extra performance there. Doesn't matter if you're an EP or not. When your foot can land and splay, it's a better control, better cushioning, better pronation, better, better takeoff. Try them and let you know what I think. First time you wear outras, they're like, this feels fucking awkward. They're sloppy and they're loose, almost feels like. But then I'll go back to my old Brooks or a Nike or an Asics shoe and go, fuck, these are so cramped. I can't wear these anymore. You know, so you, you get that you get that move. It's like a good relationship. And you've had a, a good relationship, people are really looking after you, caring for you, doing what you really love and ticking your boxes. It's like, this is a bit weird. This is a bit weird. Then maybe you go back or have a break and it's like, actually, I like that. I don't like the old stuff anymore. So, Outra's the only shoe that I have. If you see me on the street, I'm going to wear my cycling shoes or I'm going to wear Outra's. There's no mid midway for me. I don't even have any dress shoes, but Outra do do dress shoes. This might sound like a little sponsored video, but it's not. I've done, um, I swear shit is, I guess. But, you know, I'll only recommend or only accept things that I'll use myself. And I'm not a person who's bought you can't just give me 10 grand or 20 grand or 50 grand and say hey harley promote this you know, unless i believe in it unless i buy my own money and use it then I'm, then i'll back it otherwise not interested i'm not casey neistat i can't be bought i'm not a youtube hooker no there's wrong with that but a lot of people do that and they're not transparent about it so in case you thought this is just a bias re review because out will give me free product it's not i like to keep my shoes you know i like to wear shit out man you know, I'm not one of those persons who's just like, my shoes are dirty, give me a free pair. I like to wear stuff beyond its product life cycle. Like, look at this. I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera. These shoes are thrashed, but they're still going strong. You know? 
if Archer said, hey, you know, we'll give you a pair of shoes, he's a 4.0, then I'll give these to someone who could use them in Thailand or Philippines. I can't throw anything into landfill. I just can't do that. It's like, I don't know, I collect all my stuff and take it to Thailand or Philippines every year and give it away. I just can't throw nothing out. It's like, there's people out there who don't have any you know, nice clothing or footwear. There's people who never, ever in their life experience the, what, the joy of actually having a good pair of shoes. So why throw your shoes into landfill? Next holiday you go, bring your shoes and just leave them in the hotel. The hotel cleaners will just pop them up and just give them away. But before you go, just put them in someone else's room, just stash them somewhere. Someone else will grab them in Asia and they'll use them. You know? And they'll enjoy them. They'll appreciate them. Anyway, I'm digressing from the, the review there. I like the upper, I like the colours, I like the feel. It's a fast, responsive shoe, good toe box, laces look pretty good, and uh, I like the colourway as well. So there you go, that's my outro at Solstice for you. It feels a little bit more cushioning than the one. This cushioning feels a bit more durable. Um, the sock liner, just a pretty standard outro, wide toe box. And that's another thing you can do is you can put your foot against your, look at that, see that? If that was a Nike, it'd be spilling over the sides. So that's a good say, good way to chest your shoes out. It's like, you know, or you can even put your foot on top of your shoe. So look at that. So see that? That's a fucking proper shoe. That's a proper shoe. You know, when I worked in the football industry, like, we didn't have these sort of shoes. It was like, you just got a crampy little foot, like a ballet, Asics, Keanos or whatever. That's a fucking proper shoe. So outro, I get my vote every time. The first outros were hard and hideous looking. But these new outros, last four years, fucking game changers. Let's take some questions from the chat. We'll keep them, try and keep them running specific. If you have any running questions, I'll be here for a few more minutes and then I've got to head, oops, I'll sort the camera view around. Let's have a look, see, um, on some of the questions here. How much are the outros? Let's, I don't really like different prices because you might live in Pakistan, you might live in Thailand, you might live in Russia, so. Go to your local outdoor shop or website and you get the pricing there. So, you know. Um, how long till the jersey's shipped to UK? Uh, if you haven't got a tracking order, you should get it very soon. You should get it very soon. I'll do it. I'll get, I'll get, I'll finish those tracking orders today. Thanks for the reminder. Thanks for the reminder. Um, the Vegan Festival in Adelaide this weekend. I may or may not be there. Depends if I'm in Adelaide or not. I'm not sure exactly. I'm in Sydney right now. I'm in Sydney right now. Alright, so some running questions. How much do I weigh? About last night, I weighed myself 73 kilos. How was the vegan festival? That, that wasn't a vegan festival yesterday, that was uh, the Sydney Vegan Market. The Sydney Vegan Market, it's pretty cool. Uh, is it leather on the upper? There's no leather in these shoes. This is all synthetic. You know? This is all synthetic. It's all synthetic. All synthetic. Um, Training for an ultra 50k thoughts on shoes, Billy Johnstone. Billy, I would recommend if you're not using ouchers already, and again, this sounds really salesy and sponsored, but honestly, man, try the ouchers. Don't go 100% ouchers, because you, you know, the zero drop may trigger your Achilles. It, may be, it didn't for me, but some people it does. So put the ouchers in your rotation and let your body adapt to that zero drop feel. Zero drop means from heel to forefoot, it's flat. It was even, like a barefoot shoe, all right? So the benefits of barefoot, wide toe box, zero drop, so natural running gait, natural running form, which is better, feel, you feel better to run, less injury, more speed for the same effort, better running economy, and you get that max cushion. So for the 50K Ultra, I'd recommend something like a Ultra Olympus, something like that, some max cushion shit. So 50K is a long way in the legs, downhills, smashing your legs, all right? So, Having that max cushion would be great. So I'd recommend get a pair of Outro Olympus, go local Outro dealer, try them on. It can be hard though if you're in Australia because there's not many stockers here. So it can be hard to get the sizing and the feel, but trust me, it's fucking worth it if you pursue it. It's worth it to pursue it. So shoe-wise, I would definitely recommend, um, you know, get some good ones, some Outros. What is better, running or riding? I think riding because of my knees. I reckon do both. You know, if you're under maybe 80 kilos, or so, then you can do both. But ease into the running. Start with just walking, little jogs, and have some max cushion shoes to start with. That'll help you a lot. Don't run in Nikes or Asics or anything like that. They're just fucking terrible, man. And trust, I can say from as experienced as a runner, as a shoe salesperson, as a shoe geek, I'm a shoe tech geek, and as a coach, all these Nikes, New Balance, Asics, they're fucking rubbish. They're fucking rubbish, man. I wish all those companies would do this sort of toe box, zero drop. 
That's how shoes are meant to be made. This whole skinny last thing is just to meet the consumer's expectation. I'm all about pragmatic footwear that enhances your performance. It's free speed. All right. These are the best shoes in the market. Ultra. Nothing comes close. But it would be really cool to see Nike and everyone else doing it. Making actually proper fucking shoes. Instead of this fashion shit that robs your performance. I'm not going to do all the training and the nutrition and the mental work and stuff like that to lose performance because my footwear is fashion oriented versus pragmatic function oriented. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's me. I'm, I'm just no wang when he's a partner anymore. I'm too old for shitty product. This doesn't work properly. Um, so hopefully that's this little rant there, but just yeah, think about it. Like fuck, I even see pro riders because they don't have a they don't have a choice. Their sponsor says you use this. I have a choice. You know, I, I can recommend or use whatever I want. It's not because I'm getting paid to do it that I'm locked into this thing. It's like no, it's like no. What outro would be good for trail running? Uh, Marky Mark says I would recommend the Outro Olympus. Check that out, Outro Olympus. Bretsky went 242 in a pair of outros today. What was that, Bretsky? Where was that? That's good. Um, I better get them because I have Nike. Nike, Nike shoes. I, I love Nike shoes. Nike shoes. They were iconic. When I was a teenager, the Air Maxes and the Triaxes and all the STs and the stabs and the structures and all that stuff. Pegasus, but really they they were just iconic because that was Nike back in the day. The Avatar, they marketed a lot of dope athletes. They got huge popularity as a status item and then had some really cool colors and designs. But in terms of functionality, not even come close to, uh, not even coming close to a um, outro performance in 2018. 242 in Toronto was cold as balls. I've got to get to Thailand. Good work, bro. That's sick. That's sick. So Chase uses the Lone Peak Outro for trail running. Lone Peak. Um, the Olympus has huge stack height. Yeah, for sure. That's why you want to get used to it. So the extra stack height can make you a little bit wobbly on certain trails. But the cushioning, it's like a full suspension mountain bike. You know, you just, you, you'll be able to go longer and stay stronger because you'll have less fatigue metabolites because your legs won't get as mashed up. Escalante is a solid comfort speed shoe, yeah. Thailand or Philippines, depends on what you want. Um, Ivan says, tips on more traffic to your YouTube channel. Um, more more videos, Ivan, more videos. Ivan, I asked that in the Facebook group as well. Maybe you didn't, I didn't, I didn't get back to it. Just I've got, I'm getting a new MacBook today, so just bear with us. I've got some little, uh, some little issues here. All right, so let's, let's get some more running. Questions, what about the Escalante? Escalante is also a shoe that I rate. The Outra Escalante. Outra Escalante would be between, for me, the Paradigm Max Cushion, be in the middle there. For me, upper end cushioning. The Escalante feels really good. It, for me, it reminds me of the 1994 Nike Air Mariah, which had a full length uh, air unit in a encapsulated midsole with a polyurethane midsole. And that shoe, fuck, I, I ran marathons in that. It was super light. But it was really narrow. You know? And the Escalante, when I first bought Escalante in a shop in Adelaide this year, I was like, wow, this is like a Nike Air Mariah. You know? But the Air Mariah was like a fantastic shoe. It's an iconic shoe back in its day. It was an iconic shoe back in its day. So, yeah. Um, if you're religious with Thailand or Philippines, you go, go to both and find out. Go to both what you find out. Uh, I have the Salomon Trail. I just want to keep this, not to be rude, but I want to keep this. Uh, this video trying to keep it running based for my runners out there. Uh, I've got the Salomon Trail. I find a way to yeah, the, the Salomon. You know what I mean? They got some great technology, but what's up with that fucking narrow, performance robbing shape? It's crazy. It's really really sad. It's really really sad. All right, um, we'll do two more questions, and I'm gonna hit the streets. I'm gonna hit the streets. Eddie says, even some outras are too narrow midfoot. Hmm. I think for me, the most important part of a shoe is, for me, is it supports you around here, but it lets your foot splay. Because this part of your foot, it doesn't really splay that much on impact. But your toes, boom, you know, it does. So the, the midfoot bit, I like a firm, I like a encapsulated midfoot. It wraps around there, my foot feels pretty firm. But like having that toe box that can splay. I've worn, I've owned probably hundreds of shoes in my lifetime. And I've worn a lot more. Because when I worked in the running store, I would try on the shoes all the time. So I could give the consumer, the customer, 
my honest feedback and opinion. And if I wanted a cushion shoe, or a stable shoe, or a light shoe, or a heavy shoe, or a clunky shoe, or whatever, I could I'd try the shoes on and wear them around, and I could give them my honest opinion. So I've tried on so many shoes, and uh, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's really really good to just try stuff out. Um, thoughts and math of turn running. There's some good points in there. Some good points in there. Should I refuel or rehydrate after a long run? No, the best thing to do, Chase, is don't eat and don't drink before, during, or after training. <laughs> the best place to be in is ketosis and dry fasting. Just for anyone who couldn't tell I was being sarcastic, no. I like to drink a cup of water before I go out for a run, have a little, you know, a little piece of fruit. Generally, I'm generally back in 10 minutes or less than an hour, and then I'll have my more water, 500 mils to a litre, and then have some sort of carbohydrate-rich breakfast. Always eat on long runs. Anything over 40 minutes, bring some food with you. Even if it's just sugar water, you know. And always eat and drink after you run. Just drink your water first, have a water bottle, have some sugars, and then get to you know, get in there. Is Kinder Body Natty? Kinder Body ain't natty. <laughs> um, all right, so Marky Mark's saying, should I wear my Hocker 1-1 or the Shitty Salomon next weekend at Ragnar Trail event? I would wear uh, whatever you find the most comfortable, the most cushioning. You know, the hawkers do have that cushioning. I think hawkers were the first one to have the really that max midsole out, so that was really good. Mike Arnstein introduced me to hawkers back in 2011. I was like, wow, this is this makes sense. So I would go the hawkers in that situation. I'll go the hawkers in that situation because the Salomon, I'm not sure how much cushioning they got. And if you're doing an ultra, then you want to have cushioning. You want to have some cushioning. Thailand or Philippines for price. Um, it depends on your budget. I would say Philippines, they're very similar. Because Philistines, Philippines, the accommodation is more expensive, but the food's cheaper. So yeah, but yeah go to decide, decide for yourself, go there, go there. Go do both. If you have to choose between both destinations, you know, go do both and then you'll be solid that you've sold yourself in the right option there. Lionel Sanders needs to carb up. I was, yeah, that's, I'm not sure what he's doing, Lionel Sanders. Does running have any benefits for cycling? I find running is good for bone density. I find running just makes my legs feel a bit strong on the bike. I feel running embraces my natural uh, ability on the bike. I do rate running, you know. I've done plenty of videos about it. So yeah, you know, you want to, um, you want to do some bit of running each week. But start with walking. Start with walking and then jog. Right. I've got plenty of... Uh, Videos about running tips and stuff like that. The outer vanish, they seem to be run large in other outers. You're always going to try a shoe on. You know, I've got an 11 and a half in these, and these are 11s. I think these 11s are 11 and a half. I can't even remember now, the tag's worn off. But I always have at least a thumb between the tip of my toe, biggest toe, longest toe, and the end of the shoe. So there. All right, one more question. I should do two more questions. What's the best food for weight loss? It's not about a food, it's more about a lifestyle. We're talking about food. Then also the best food for weight loss would be white rice and fruit and sugars. The best foods for weight loss are high carb, low fat, plant foods, vegan foods, sugar, white rice, bananas, fruits, any fruit you like, sweet fruit. Why white rice? Because it just digests really good. It tastes really good when you mix a bit of soy sauce and it just absorbs the flavors of what you're eating. It gives you energy, it helps you store muscle glycogen, it's got a great glycemic load index, and it keeps you slim, and it's good, and it's easy to get, it's cheap to make, and it's fast to make. Put rice in the rice cooker, hit, and then boom, do your thing, give your girlfriend a massage, or your boyfriend, or whatever, and you're good to go. So rice is really good. If you like brown rice, then you like brown rice. I prefer white rice, I know Natasha prefers white rice. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Pilgrim's Path in Chiang Mai. Uh, Nike Flywire XE racing shoes. I like the Nike designs and stuff, but man, the the, this, the narrowness. I'm just like, oh my god, you know. Occasionally, I try on a pair of Nike shoes for nostalgic reasons, and I'm just like, oh man, these are shocking. These are shocking. So yeah. Um, anyway, I will see you going soon. Thanks for all the comments and questions. I do have a new Instagram account. Reminds me, where's my phone? My Instagram did get deleted. All right, so go to Duran Riders. Just type in Duran Riders Instagram. That's my new account. Um, old one's gone. Done. 
SJW Trolls took it out. So if you try to find my Instagram stories, I'm posting so much on Instagram at the moment uh, and a lot more today. So get on there, follow me on Instagram, Durian Riders. I've got about 400 followers on them. Just start up again, starting up. So I will make you another video today and we'll see you again. Thanks for all the support. Peace, gang. And if you want these jerseys, there's a few left at Durian.com. But uh, yeah, sold out really quick. Thanks for the support again, gang. I'm going to go into town now in Sydney and uh, get myself a new MacBook. First world problems.